Hello, my name is Ramon Mironov. Welcome to this video about translating SDLXLF files with Omega T. This video shows the very basics of <clears throat> this process. I will show you how to use the native XLIF filter in Omega T, how to prepare SDLXLF files to use with this filter, and how to use Studio to check the translated file. I prepared a sample project and in the source subfolder of this project I put an SDLXLIF file. Now I'm going to open this project in a magazine. As you see, Magity doesn't find any project files and it says that the project is empty. And the reason is the filter. Let's see what's going on in the file filter settings. Project, properties. SDLXLIF is one of the flavors of the generic XLIF format, so the filter in a magazine that handles this format is called simply XLIF. So this is the, the filter. If we edit the filter, we'll see that SDLXLIF files are assigned to this filter. But there is also another filter. Xlib files a copy. You have the ability to switch between these two filters, like this. And of course, there is a crucial difference between them, which I'm going to show you by looking at the structure of the SDLXLIF file. Let's open it in Notepad++. Okay, this is the very end of the file. And let's dissect one of the translation units. It starts here. Okay, well, let's take this one. It starts here and adds here. And it consists of three main parts. The first one is the source part. As you see, there is the opening source stack and the closing source stack. And the text between this text is the source text. In this case, it includes three sentences. Then goes the second tag, seg source. Seg source. And this is the segmented source text. In our example, as you can see, it is the source text, the three sentences, were divided into three segments. Segment number one, one sentence, sentence. segment number two, the second sentence, and segment number three, the third sentence. Finally, there is the target tag, which also is designed to include the text and more specifically translation but at this point we do not have any translation of course because the file hasn't been translated yet now the main distinction between the two filters the native the first filter in omega reads which is counterintuitive the text which is between the target tags this text. Whereas the Acopius filter reads the text between the SAG source tags, SAG source, which is more intuitive. And of course, when we load a project, in this case, where there is no text between the target tags, a Megaty displays no segments at all. There are no segments. And this is all because we're using this filter that requires that the text to translate is between the target tags. Let's try and see what happens if we switch to the copies filter. 
So I disable the native filter and switch to the copies one. Okay, okay, reload the project. And of course, after switching to the copies filter, we get three segments because there are three segments between the seg source tags number one number two and number three because a copy reads this part of the segment it shows us the text for translation and if there is anything in the target part of the segment a copy the copies filter will show it in the translation part. I'm not going to go into detail about the copies filter because this video is about the native filter. And obviously what we need to do is to prepare this file for translation first by putting the translation the text for translation into the target text. And the the easiest way to do so is to use Studio. In Studio my task is to copy source into target to make sure that the text we will translate is available between the target tags and this is called source equals target this is how this file looks open in studio over here in the left column we have the seg source part this three segments and over here in the right column we have the target part so our task is to simply copy the source into target Thankfully, Studio provides a very convenient way to do so, and it is by using the translation menu and the command copy all source to target. Yes. Now the file looks exactly as we wanted to translate it in a megate. I will now save it and reopen it in the text editor to see what has changed. Here we go. Now in the target part of the segment we have the entire text copied from the source part. So we have segment 1, segment 2, segment 3. So in this case the source mirrors the target. And once again, I want to emphasize that we are looking at the seg source, segmented source tag. We are not interested in the very first tag, the source, at all. I will now go back to Omega T and reopen this project to see what has changed. Okay, as you see now, with the native XL filter, we get three segments just as expected. And we're now free to translate them. I'll use the Microsoft Translator for the sake of this video. Okay, now we have the entire file translated into Russian. So we are ready to create the translated document. Okay, translated documents created. Let's take a look at what Omega T produced in the text editor. All right, as you see, Omega T replaced the target. which before translation looked as source. So we had 
source copied into target a mega t put the translation into the target so now we have the complete segment as expected by studio we have the sex source of course we have here the original text intact and in the target in the right column we have the translation let's see how this will look in studio okay so as we see a megati inserted the translation correctly in the right column and we're ready to deliver the file one best practice for translating as Dalek files for the megat is trying to save the final file in studio to make sure that the structure of the file was intact because we we translated the file in a different program there is a certain degree of chance that the the file was corrupted and by saving the final file you make sure that the final file saves correctly and it will not create any problems on your customers end and you do this by pressing shift F12 save target as okay here you click save and if the file saves correctly and there are no errors reported it means that you did your job well and there are no problems at all to conclude this video I want to add two things first of all what I showed you in this video is a very very basic process there are quite a few nuances about it and we'll probably go in them we'll discuss them in detail in future videos but this is a very basic process and the second point is that this process this instruction also applies to basically any other XLIF file not just SDLXLIF remember that SDLXLIF is just one of the flavors of the generic XLIF format alright thank you very much for watching please feel free to leave your comments below this video or rate it thank you for your time bye bye